In this video we're going to show you how to create the toolpaths to cut the part you can see on the screen. To do this we're going to use an assembly that we made in a companion tutorial where we showed you how to take one of the projects from the design and make website and lay out the 3D models in it to represent the design you can see here. In this video we're going to start by looking at a simple version of the toolpaths that we could create and then we're going to look at how we can be a little bit more careful about the way that we create our boundaries for the toolpaths so that we can more efficiently machine the 2D and 3D areas separately. Let's open a new copy of the software. Just click on the icon to open an existing file and from the project folder we'll select the file that we created in the assembly part of this tutorial TNC mini project underscore model and hit the open button. We just tile the window so we can see the 2D and 3D view. You can see that we have a collection of 3D components that we've imported and created our 3D layout with and then we also generated some text that was converted into individual vectors. To make it a little bit easier to select this I'm just going to click and drag a box around that just selecting the text and click on the icon to group those objects together. Let's just click to deselect that. For the first part of the video, I want to show you how it would be very quick and easy for us just to toolpath this as a whole. Then in the second part, we're going to look at a toolpathing it a little bit more efficiently by creating some vector boundaries around some of the different 3D objects so that we can cut the flat areas in the job with a flat tool and the 3D areas with the ball nose. Here though, as I say, we'll just look at how we could quickly machine the whole thing if we weren't worried about being particularly efficient. We click on the icon, we can switch over to the toolpaths tab and if you do plan to actually machine this job it's important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and whatever material you plan to machine it into. Here the first thing I'm going to do is check my material setup so I'm going to click on the set button. We have one inch thick material, XY datum set for the centre. I'm going to move that to the lower left there and then I'm going to put in a small gap above the job here so we'll set this to be 0.05 of an inch so we've got a bit of stock behind it here and then a little bit of gap of above to allow for any flat spots on the design. Z zeros on the top of the block, should have mentioned that before at the top there and home start position I'm going to set to be 0.25 of an inch hit OK and so we're ready now to calculate our toolpaths. If we were just doing simple machining on this then I would rough and finish it so if we click on the icon for 3D roughing, I'm going to select from the tool database a quarter inch end mill tool. I'm just going to take the default settings for this, you may want to adjust that as appropriate. And I'm going to select the model boundary to be the edge of the part that I want to machine. That means the software will just look at the visible 3D objects and it will use a boundary around the outside of those in order to cut this. I do want to add a boundary offset so that we go a little bit past the edge to make sure the tool fits down the side of my objects and I do want to add a machining allowance as well when I'm roughing this so I'm going to put 0.04 of an inch as a kind of an imaginary skin that will be added to the model there to leave some material for the finishing. We'll do Z-level roughing, I'm not going to worry about ramping in this case we'll just call this 3D finish roughing and hit calculate and let the software generate our toolpath for us. Now if we just maximise our 3D view there and preview the selected toolpath we can see how that's going to look when we machine it. If that looks OK we can close the preview toolpath form there and we can click on the icon to create 3D finishing toolpath. For this i would select a 1 8 ball nose tool so pick that from the tool database there. If we click on edit, we want the step over for this, which is going to control the quality of the finish to be between 8 and 10% of the diameter of the tool. We could adjust any of these other values if we wanted, depending again on our material and our machine. Hit OK. Again, I'm going to use the model boundary to machine this and a boundary offset this time of 0.15 of an inch. And we'll just set this to raster parallel to the x-axis, so raster angle of 0 and 3D finish and hit calculate. Now this will take a moment to calculate 
and when it's done we're going to have a toolpath that's not only cutting the sort of 3D areas of the job but also is going to cut the flat part that we've got on our sign panel here. Now while this would work okay it would be quite a time consuming toolpath to run and it would be much more efficient for us to cut that flat area with a flat tool so we're going to come back in a moment and look at the technique to do that. If we did want to cut the whole thing though with a single tool as we are here, I could say preview that, you can see that machining back and forward across the job and there you can see what the finished part is going to look like there. Now if we close the preview toolpath form, I'm going to come back to the 2D view, I'm going to select that uh, vector that we grouped together, I'm going to click on the VCarve toolpath and I'm going to set the start depth to zero. I'm going to select a 90 degree V-bit from the tool database and I'm going to choose the option here to project the toolpath onto the 3D model. So what that will do is look at the 3D object we've got and just project this V-carving down onto it. So I've got a flat surface there so it should be the same as if I'd found out what that depth was and entered it as the start depth there. So we'll call this V-carve text and hit calculate. There I can see the toolpath that we're going to generate with that tool can preview the selected toolpath and I can make sure that that looks okay it's not cutting into the leaves or anything and at this point if I wanted I could go ahead and fit a vector around the outside of the part and do a profile cut in order to cut it out. However as I said what I would like to do is get a bit more efficient with my 3D machining. So I'm just going to close this now I'm going to come back over to the 2D view here and also back over to the drawing tab so I'm going to click on the option here to switch to the drawing tab there and we'll just click on the icon here to zoom to fit the F key on the keyboard would be a shortcut to do that as well. Let's just click in the background to deselect the text. Now what I want to do is create vector boundaries around some of the 3D objects so that I can then trim those in order to get the areas that I want to do the 3D machining on. So if I come down one of the things I can do automatically on the modeling tab here is to click on the icon to create a vector boundary from selected components. So if I select the top component there, shift and select the bottom component so everything is selected in the list click on the icon there to create a vector boundary from components now if I click in the background you can see I can select that boundary that we've got there now and that goes around the outside of all my objects. Now at this point this is grouped together and it includes these interior areas here. Now I actually don't want those as part of my boundary I just want a silhouette around the outside of the job so what I'm going to do is just right mouse click and go to the option to ungroup objects and we'll ungroup objects onto groups layer and while they're still selected I'm just going to click and deselect the very outside edge to leave only these interior vectors still selected and now I can hit delete on the keyboard. Now I'm going to reselect this vector, right mouse click, choose the option to move to layer, new layer and I'm going to call that outside boundary and I'm just going to make that invisible and inactive and hit OK so it disappears and we'll come back to that in a moment. Now the other boundary I'm going to need is going to be around the outside of the sign panel so that I can isolate the flat areas but making sure that I don't cut into areas like the leaf, the glasses and the bottle. So to start with I'm going to create a vector by selecting the leaf, holding shift down and selecting the leaf on the other side, then still holding shift selecting the two glasses and the bottle components from the 2D view and click on the icon here to create vector boundary from selected components. If I just click in the background you can see the boundary that I've created there. Next I'm going to select the engraving plaque component and again click to create a vector boundary from the selected components. Now I want to offset this in a little so that I make sure I do create some 3D toolpath around the outside of my sign panel here. So I'm going to select that, come to the drawing tab click on the icon to offset selected vectors and I'm going to say inwards 0.15 of an inch delete original and select new and click on the offset button there. 
Now if I close that, what I want to do is take away the areas of the leaf, the glass and the bottles from that vector that I've just created there. So with that selected first, I'm going to shift and select this group of vectors that were created. I'm going to click on the icon here to subtract vectors and now what I've got is a vector boundary there which represents the flat area that I want to machine but also is going to make sure that I don't cut into the area where the bottle and the glasses are. Now if we come back to the layer manager switch on the outside boundary layer there I should have all the vectors I need to go over into the machining tab and do more efficient machining now. So let's click on the icon to switch to the toolpaths tab come up to view and tile the windows horizontal so we can see the 2D and 3D view. Now the roughing can remain as it is just machining over the whole part leaving a bit of an allowance but if we come to the 3D finishing I'm going to double click that and this time I'm going to change from using the model boundary for the machining limit to using the selected vectors and then from the 2D view I'm going to select the outer vector we created and shift and select the inner vector there I'm going to set the boundary vector offset to 0.1 of an inch, set it to raster and we'll just recalculate that now and what it should do is just respect the boundary that we created there so that we just machine in between these areas only on the 3D objects. Now I'm going to reset the preview, I'm going to select the roughing, preview the selected toolpath, then I'm going to select the finishing and preview that. Now if we maximise the 3D view we can see that's done a good job of machining all the 3D areas with the 3D tool but before I do the V carving I will want to come in and just pocket out this area here with a flat tool in order to make sure that's been machined away before we do the V carving. So if we just close the preview toolpaths form what I want to do is have a look in here at the um, relative depth of this flat area and if I hover the cursor over it at the very bottom of the interface you can see it shows me the XYZ location. The Z location of that with our material setup and the size of the model we have now is negative 0.3834 of an inch. So what I'm going to do is come over and tile the windows again so we can see both the 2D and 3D view. I'm going to click on the icon for pocket toolpath. I'm going to select just the boundary that we've got here and put in a cut depth of 0.3834 of an inch so basically the value that we read off here if we look in this area of the screen when I run the cursor over the model it says negative 0.3834 so that's my cut depth. Now I'm going to select a quarter inch end mill for this and I don't want it to do multiple passes because we'll already have roughed away a lot of the material above this. So what I'm going to do is set this to have a start depth of 0.2 and then take 0.2 off the cut depth here. So we'll make that 0.01834. So total cut depth will still be 0.3834 which is correct. Now we can edit the tool, set the pass depth to be 0.2 make sure that it's going to cut that in a single pass if I want it to. We'll leave that set to raster and we'll just call that toolpath pocket and calculate and now if we preview that we can see it's going to machine away the flat area using a flat tool. Now the V carving should still be correct if we preview that. Make sure we have the right toolpath selected there so that looks good. And what we may want to do is just adjust the order of these toolpaths. So I might want to take that pocket toolpath and move it up. And we may in fact want to rough first, then pocket with the same tool we're roughing with, then 3D finish, and then V-carve. The final operation we're going to want to do, if we close that preview form, is to select the outer vector, click on the icon for profiling around this, set the cut depth to be the thickness of the material, so I'm going to type Z equals in order to pull that up from our material block setting going to select quarter inch end mill for this and we'll edit this so that we've got a more sensible pass depth again um, values for this would depend on your material I'm going to cut outside of that vector if I want to I could add tabs to hold the part in place we won't in this case we'll just assume we have a way of holding the part down without tabs we'll call that toolpath profile cutout hit calculate preview that now 
maximize the 3D view we can see that being cut out if I double click on the waste material that'll get rid of it and what I can see there in the preview window is exactly the part I should cut based on running those toolpaths on my CNC machine assuming that I get all the setup the same as I have in the software here now if we were ready to machine this all that would remain is to close this select the toolpath we wanted to save and click on the icon to save the toolpath choose the appropriate post processor that will translate this data into a language our machine can understand and then hit the save toolpaths button in order to output that and send it over to our CNC. So to conclude I'm just going to close this I'm not going to save the toolpaths but I am going to come over and save the file and we'll give it the same name but we'll just change the end of that to toolpath and hit save so you have a copy of that if you want to take a look at it and if you remember what we looked at here is that it would be very quick and easy for me just to throw a toolpath over the complete job as we did at the beginning but then what I tried to do is show you how you could be a bit more efficient about the way you machine this by creating appropriate vector boundaries and then using a flat tool to cut the flat areas ball nose tool to cut the 3D areas and that should cut a bit quicker and also give you a better quality finish part as well if you prefer to do that that concludes this tutorial.